Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day 14 of the How Not to Die Challenge. So my husband and I are going to, I got him up super duper duper early, and he and I are going to um, work out together and so that I can then take a shower and be ready for the day um, and so that he could take a nap because I got him up super crazy early. So yeah, so anyway, we're gonna go do a fitness blender workout video. Um, I'm going to do either a lower body or um, like a, an abs workout or something along those lines. I don't actually care what we do, just something along those lines. Huh. I don't know what that is. I wasn't watching that. Some kind of a... Is that like a wrestling thing? I don't have a clue what that is. There's something on our YouTube channel that just came up that's totally not anything either of us would ever watch. So, weird. Anyways, uh, we're gonna go work out and I'm going to make some food today and I hope you guys are having a good one so far and I will talk to you again later. Hi guys. So, um, this morning, exercised, uh, went and showered. My husband made himself a smoothie that was like a snickerdoodle type smoothie. We've had, we've talked about that before in the past. And it, um, basically where you have like white beans and peanut butter and uh, cinnamon and that's, that's the basics of it. Um, and so he made that for himself and then he made me a mint chocolate smoothie, which was super awesome and super delicious and wonderful. So I had that earlier. It's almost 11 now. So I am actually, um, making lunch and this is a recipe out of, um, the How Not to Die cookbook. It's mac and cheese. So I'm really hopeful that this is going to turn out decent. Um, it doesn't have to be like, okay, so before I became vegan, so it's going on three years now, almost a couple months out, but um, there was, actually the reason I became vegetarian was because there was nothing that we cooked anymore that I liked. Um, like nothing except macaroni and cheese and um, maybe pizza. I don't know. Like I hated everything that we made really and truly. Um, but we were very, very much, I don't know if this is normal or not, but we've got a bunch of kids. We had five at the time. Um, still have five children they're just a couple of them are out of the house now but anyways that sounded funny um we do a piece of meat and some kind of a, a maybe a vegetable sometimes and then a starch of some sort so a potato or I don't know something along those lines so anyways and I have just never really been a big meat fan so every time I've tried to do the Atkins diet or in my case I did the Kimkins diet which is very similar but a little bit healthier anyway it was awful like I think the only reason I lost weight was because I just didn't eat because I didn't, I mean, there's only just so much turkey bacon that you can eat before you're like, <laughs> you know? So anyway, I didn't really ever, I just really detested meat. And my husband's like, if you don't like the food that we're eating, then just stop eating meat. And I was like, huh, how brilliant. So anyway, but that was one of the things that I absolutely loved was macaroni and cheese. And I have not found a macaroni and cheese that replaces a cow, nasty, gross dairy based macaroni and cheese at all. Um, but there are definitely some that are better than others. Um, I really do like the Daya macaroni and cheese, but it is like nothing but grease. So it's way not healthy for you. So obviously that tastes delicious. But I am hopeful that this will taste good. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a replacement for macaroni and cheese. So if you're looking for a replacement for dairy-based macaroni and cheese, I don't know if this is going to be it or not, but I'm just looking for something that will be, oh, that tastes good. That's what I'm looking for. So anyways, this is not super complex, um, but there's a decent amount of ingredients. Um, and then you bake it in the oven. So I am actually going to, um, I am so cheating on this. I am using one pot for everything. I'm going to cook the pasta in the pot, which actually it's going right now. I'm going to cook the vegetables in the pot. I am going to put all of the macaroni and cheese back into the pot and put it in the oven that way. So totally, totally cheating all the way around. So first things first. Um, I have the pasta going right now and it calls for eight ounces of whatever type of whole grain pasta you want to use. And I am using a brown rice, whole grain brown rice pasta, um, just little shells. Now if this was something that I wanted to eat later, I would actually um, not do it this way. I would actually make a chickpea pasta based one because they don't suck up all the sauce. Like a brown rice pasta just sucks up all the sauce that you put on it and then it just becomes kind of goopy. It's not awesome. Um, although Tinkiata is really good brand and Tinkiata and <sighs> Kadia, which I don't, I don't think they sell that everywhere. But anyways, those are both very good brands. 
I need to go put broccoli in my water real quick. I'll be right back to tell you why I'm putting broccoli in my water. Hang on just a second. Okay, let's get back to this. So I've got eight ounces of pasta cooking um, and you're supposed to, um, okay, let's just say that's done, okay? Pasta cooked, done. It's in a container waiting for you to be done and, and use it, okay? Next thing you wanna do is you wanna take a cup of broth and you wanna cook half of a red onion, which I'm using a white onion because I don't have a red onion, and one clove of garlic and one and a half cups of chopped carrot. So I should have read the recipe a little bit better. This is going to be blended, so it did not need to be finely chopped at all, <laughs> even though I did. So, um, so I'm gonna use this shredded carrot because the only carrot that I have at the moment is carrot chips for hummus and this. So I'm gonna use this. That looks like it's probably about a cup and a half-ish. I don't know, close enough. And then there is, I, it says a half of a cup of chopped onion. I just chopped up half of an onion and that's, there we go. Sometimes you can make the color change. Anyways, here, I'll put a shadow on it for you. There we go, there we go. So there's half of an onion and I'm gonna put some enoki mushrooms in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then I had some pieces of broccoli left over uh, from the getting the florets off. I'm going to put that in my frozen bag for my um, broth. I don't see how that could be any, have a problem at all. That should be good. So when this is done, I'm going to put this in the strainer in the sink and we'll talk about the broccoli in a little bit. I'm going to cook the onion and the carrot and some garlic for eight to 10 minutes in a pot with one cup of broth. So let's go do that. And then I will come and talk to you about the sauce. We'll do that next. So let's make some sauce for the macaroni and cheese while the vegetables are finishing cooking. So what you need, you need a bigger one. You don't, the little Nutribullet's not gonna cut it for this because you actually need to have um, what's cooking on the stove and then you also need an additional two cups of liquid plus some other stuff. So you need a total of three cups of veggie broth for this. One cup is in with the vegetables cooking right now and then I'm going to put my other two cups. So I've used two cups out of here so I know there's two cups left because there's four cups in here total. Um, so I'm just gonna put this in here And stand back because they always splash. I hate these little containers. Okay, hate is a strong word. I don't hate. I don't like the fact that they splash. <laughs> All right. So there's the two cups of that. Next on the list of ingredients is one half cup of nutritional yeast. And you know how I, I've shown you this one all the time. This is you can get this even at Kroger. Um, this is the kind that we buy, and this is actually a little container. Um, we buy like a jar. Gar gargantuan size container. Um, happens to be that I had one of these in the laundry room extra and my mom was like, oh my gosh, I'm running out. And I was like, okay, no problem. Come over and take the one that we have that's extra. And she ended up taking the one that we had in the closet that was already open and it was the massive one. Totally fine. It was already open. No big deal. So anyways, need one half cup of nutritional yeast. And if you guys have never poured this or scooped this, uh, <coughs> okay. <coughs> I was just gonna say, don't breathe in the dust that comes off of it, cause <laughs> it'll make you cough every time. Like transferring this, I, you put a funnel in here and I just dump it in there and like smoke with the dust from it comes up and goes everywhere and it's, no, not pleasant. Okay, now we're moving on. Two tablespoons of almond butter. I'm using organic peanut butter. I don't have any almond butter. I never have almond butter. No biggie. Peanut butter, it'll be just fine. Do do do, scoop it out. And one more. Good enough, whatever. Okay. Then we need, again, my food. If you don't like it, don't watch. I don't care, it's fine. Um, I meant don't watch me lick my finger off, not don't watch my videos ever. Sorry if that was offensive, that didn't mean to be. Okay, so we need one teaspoon of your savory spice blend. And then you need two teaspoons of the blended peeled lemon. I have not re-blended any more lemon up, so I just peeled off some of the outer skin. I think that's probably gonna be about two teaspoons worth. Um, so I'm just, I just chopped the end off and there we go. It's gonna get blended anyway, right? I blend it ahead of time to put it in there and measure it. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, 
I don't know if you guys have noticed, I'm really relaxed about cooking. Uh, it, it, it'll be fine. Everything, it will always just be fine. <laughs> Finally used up my old miso, so it's time to open up a new miso, which apparently is more difficult than I thought it would be. Hmm, interesting. Holy cow. Whew, that was a lot of work to get in there. Okay, so we need how much of this? We need two teaspoons. One, two. And then I also need, oh my, it's going everywhere. Yeah, this is one of the things that I won't lick off because I need a teaspoon of mustard. Hmm. Let's just bang some out of this because about um, whether or not I get exactly the right amount. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. And this little container needs to get washed out and recycled because it is done now. And then, that's gonna beep in a second. I'll go get it in just a second. Need a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. And you need one half teaspoon of smoked paprika. I would assume that you probably do wanna get smoked, not sweet. I don't know that for sure, but I would assume so. Hang on just a second. Okay, so that's what goes in there. You see that my, my uh, mustard is everywhere, but that's okay, because it'll go back down again. Okay, so you need this, plus the vegetables that are on the stove, and then you want to go ahead and blend this really well. So that is what I'm going to do next. And then it does say to taste it and adjust the seasonings if necessary. So I'll taste it, and if, it, if I think it maybe needs a little bit more punch of mustard, then I'll put a little bit more mustard in there, no problem. Um, but that's all that you need here. So, what I was doing with the broccoli. So, you're supposed to steam the broccoli. You're supposed to have one cup of steamed broccoli or chopped greens, whatever the case may be. And um, I wasn't going to go to the effort of steaming my broccoli. So, I didn't. And I did have more than a cup of it, to be honest with you. So anyway, so I put it, I just, in the last three minutes that the uh, pasta was cooking, I just put it in there. It's not, it's still got a little bit of firmness to it. Um, three minutes is usually perfect for putting it in boiling water to get it to be where it still had, let me grab some so I can show you rather than just telling you about it, hang on. So you can see that it's still green, like it hasn't turned into that icky, mushy color green, and it's definitely not soggy. Um, but this is the consistency I want to eat broccoli. If I'm cooking broccoli, I don't want it to be mush. Um, it's really hard for me to buy a bag of broccoli that's frozen and use it because it just turns into mush. But this still has some firmness to it, which is what I'm looking for with broccoli. I don't know after I get it out of the oven what it's going to be like, but this is the consistency that I would want it to have. So, I'm going to go put the other vegetables and stuff in here, and I'm going to blend it. And then I'm going to um, put the pasta into the back into the pot, and then mix this into it. Let's let me see if there's anything else. Okay, so you actually, when you're done with that, you have that in there. You've got it all nice and mixed up. You're supposed to put a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs. Um, let's see, one one quarter cup whole grain breadcrumbs on the top, and then um, also another quarter of a teaspoon of smoked paprika, paprika across the top. So I am going to actually use um, soy curls. If you buy soy curls in a 12 pound box like we do, like it's a big box, um, when you get down to the bottom after you've put them all in bags and put them in your freezer and stuff, when you get to the bottom there's soy curl crumbs. Again, it's on the counter. Let me go grab it so I can show you rather than just telling you. Hang on. Good grief, I'm getting my exercise just walking back and forth across the kitchen. So anyways. We keep this in the freezer and that's what it looks like. So I'm just going to sprinkle this across the top. Um, and it, it per works perfectly for breadcrumbs. And you can actually take this and um, mix spices into it to make it a flavored breadcrumb and it works even just wonderfully. So anyways, that's what I'm gonna put across the top. Um, I will show it to you quick before I get it in the oven. And then you are supposed to cook it at 375 degrees for 20 minutes. And then you're supposed to serve it hot. So yeah. I am probably gonna eat lunch before my husband gets up. I, I put him down for a nap because he was very, very tired. <laughs>
Um, usually I'm the one that takes a nap because I sleep for like three to five hours and then I'm like, I'm tired and then I'll take like an hour and a half nap. But um, yeah, so he's napping and I'm not going to go get him till 1230. So it's only 1115. I'm going to probably eat before he gets up. So anyway, so I'm going to do all that stuff and I'll back, be back to show you what it looks like in just a minute. So uh, yeah, the flavor of it is fine. The flavor is good. Um, I mixed in, I have over a cup left, like a cup and a quarter left in there. Um, and it's plenty gooey. I don't really think that it needs more sauce. Hang on a second. Let's see if you guys can see this. You see that? I mean, there is plenty of sauce on there. It does not need more at all. So I'm not going to put more in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go put the topping on it and I'm going to put it in the oven and we'll see you guys when it's done. All right guys, so here it is. There is my macaroni and cheese. The only thing that I did different um, with this is that I did sprinkle a tiny little bit of, mac of uh, paprika on it when I got it out of the dish uh, because I wanted to take a pretty picture if I was able to. And I put a little bit of black pepper on it because I didn't have any black pepper in the recipe and turmeric and black pepper are supposed to be very, very good for you combination wise. So there's my macaroni and cheese. It looks very delicious. I have not tried it yet. Um, I'm sure it's very, very hot, but let's blow on it and try some. Yeah, it's not macaroni and cheese, but it sure does taste good. Mm-hmm. It's very good. We could definitely call it a one pot baked macaroni and cheese. Um, considering that there is almost no sodium in this, there's a little bit from the broth that I use that's low sodium and there's a little teeny, tiny, teeny little bit from the mustard. Um, so essentially this is really and truly almost sodium free. No sugar, no oil for sure. Um, yeah, this is pretty good. This is not bad. I could definitely eat this. Mm -hmm. Not only can I, I'm going to. Excuse me. I'm going to go eat this for lunch. Um, I am going to be, we're having a, like a potluckish type thing with my parents for supper tonight. Um, and Samantha is coming home from college to eat with us. So she asked for carrot dogs. So we have those marinating in the refrigerator. I'm not going to eat those because they are super high in sodium. So I won't be eating one of those, but my mom always brings a salad. So I'll have a nice big dish of salad. I'm also going to be making the, um, I don't remember what it was called. The pasta salad that I made the other day, I'm going to make that again, um, enough for everybody. And then i um, going to have, I've already chopped up some strawberries and I've got strawberries and blueberries in a dish for people. And I made the peanut butter swirl fudge brownies for dessert tonight. Um, I'm not having that, but that's totally fine. It'll be, it's friendly for everybody else. So anyway, that is it for now. I'm going to go eat lunch and then in about 45 minutes wake up my husband. This wasn't a lot of work. There was a few, quite a few ingredients but it just it really wasn't that much work at all guys. So this was pretty easy. Um, but I'm gonna go eat because I'm hungry. So I'll talk to you guys again later.